Welcome to module 10 of our financial accounting course. This module, fairly technical module on shareholders equity. Now, we're going to touch on a lot of topics, common shares, dividends, things we've touched on before, but we'll have a new angle on them. But there's going to be a new account introduced this chapter, and I want to discuss that account in this video. Uh, so in this video, I want to focus in on a new account called preferred shares. When I was a kid, I had this board game called Stock Ticker. And the way it worked is you rolled dice and you bought stocks and based on your dice rolls, the price of the stock went up and down and you sold for more money and you were trying to make more money than your friends. And of course, I was a kid. When, when I was a kid, I was obsessed with money. And one of the features in the game is you could buy common shares or you could buy preferred shares. And the game actually didn't treat preferred shares properly. What it did, I, I'm, I'm going by my best memory, was it had like a multiplier effect. So if, if your common shares went up by 10%, while well, your preferred shares were going up by 20%. Like this, whatever the, the common shares did, the, the preferred shares would do more. If they fell, the preferred shares would fall by more. And so my whole life, and in this game, you were smart just to go for preferred shares if you could. Um, so my whole life, up before I became an accountant, I just thought, well, if I'm looking at investments, preferred shares are the ones to get because this stock ticker game told me they were. And also because of the name, right? Just look at the name. Let's compare the two names. We've got preferred shares on top and common shares below. What would you like? You know, just as a marketing exercise here. I would prefer to be a preferred guest at a hotel. I don't want to be a common guest at a hotel or an airline's preferred customer. I would prefer to have preferred shares. Just the name itself makes you think, oh, these are the good ones. But in reality, not necessarily so, and often not the case. Most often, if you're investing in a company, you are buying common shares, and common shares give us the right to participate in the uh, sort of gains and losses, the good and bad parts of uh, owning a company, but mostly the good. You're thinking of the upside, and common shares tend to have way more upside than do preferred shares. And these are the investments when you're investing in a company you should be uh, considering uh, most often, or you will be considering most often. So what on earth then are preferred shares? Well, preferred shares, the, the word preferred actually focuses in on really one thing. Uh, we'll look at a couple of reasons they're preferred or might be preferred, but really the main reason they're preferred, they're called preferred, is because uh, it's, it's actually talking about bankruptcy. When the company goes bankrupt and they're liquidating and there's a lineup of creditors, people the company owed money to, uh, and they're trying to get their money back out of this company that's you know bankrupt and can't afford to pay its bills, uh, preferred shares are ahead of common shares in that line. Common shareholders get, get the money last, right? Once the, the bones have been picked over by the vultures, common shareholders get their piece of the pie. Preferred shareholders will get made whole long before, or, or right before, I should say, common shareholders. So they have prefer liquidation preference, I think would be the word. Uh, if the company is insolvent, preferred shares get their money back sooner. Uh, also, often, not always the case, but often, and I'll start writing this down, preferred shares will have dividend preference. And that's going to be the key feature here is features related to dividends are something our chapter kind of focuses in on. So the first thing as I say dividend preference, the idea here is I can't pay a dividend to the common shareholders until I first paid a dividend to preferred shareholders. So they have diff uh, preference when it comes to dividends. And dividends is a good way to get money out of a company. And so, of course, that's that's a nice preference to have, right? You get dividends first. Um, so that's, that's a, a key feature. Uh, other features, and these are more optional. Uh, I'll say cumulative dividends. And this is something that will come up this chapter. So like, let's say my common shareholder is expecting a $1 dividend and I don't pay them. It's kind of like, well, you were expecting it, but too bad. You know, I gave you bad information. I'm not paying the dividend. We don't have enough cash. Too bad for you. 
if the preferred shares have this cumulative aspect, if they're expecting a dollar dividend, they'll get it. And if they don't get it, they get a $2 dividend next year. And if they don't get that, they get a $3 dividend next year. It just piles up. That's what a cumulative dividend means. And that is a, a frequently cited feature of preferred shares. So that's you know feature number one. Uh, optional feature number two, and this is one that won't come up in our chapter. It's more for an intermediate uh, class convertible. We can uh, have the option of a preferred share to convert to a common share if we feel like the common share is the better way to go. Um, you hear about this in Silicon Valley. It's not really done with preferred shares as much. It, it's convertible notes, but they have notes payable that convert into common shares. Same can be done with preferred shares. They can convert into common shares at some agreed upon rate. Uh, the third thing is they can be callable. So this is where the company can, and redeemable is another word here, this is where the company can say, hey, we want to buy back your preferred share. So that's an option that benefits the company, not necessarily the preferred shareholder, but the company has the option to sort of buy it back. They can also be, uh, what's the word, retractable. I was going to call it redeemable. Retractable. And that's almost the flip side of the coin. That's where the uh, preferred shareholder has a right to sell their share. Just It's enforced liquidity, right? If, if you can't find a buyer for me to sell this share, you company have to buy it back. That's what a retractable share is. And five, participating. And again, um, the gist of participating is we can't pay our common shareholders until after we paid our preferred shareholders dividends. But let's say we want to pay our common shareholders, let's say we promise our preferred shareholders a dollar a year and we pay them their dollar. And our common shareholders, we go, oh, we got a lot of profit. We're very profitable this year. We're going to pay you $30. And because common shares sort of steer the company, they, they can opt to pay themselves a bigger dividend. Well, if the preferred shareholders are participating, it means, listen, if you're going to pay the common shareholders more, guess what? you got to pay us more too. We are participating in any dividends that they uh, get as well. So those features are, are common ones. Uh, our class is going to focus in on this. We're going to focus in on the dividend preference, the fact that the dividends are cumulative uh, to preferred shareholders. Those are really going to be the features we focus in on. But if you take an intermediate or advanced accounting class, you could expect to explore a lot of these other items. Okay, so I can't wait to get to some problems in shareholders' equity, and uh, you'll see preferred shares all over those problems. All right, that's all for this video. Stay tuned for the next one.